Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll have a look at the new reveal for Warcry. This will be the final box set of the season for Warcry, and it's going to be coming out very soon. Expect it in the next few weeks. So if you've been waiting for this, it's not long to go now, and we're going to see two brand new warbands going up against each other. It's the Stormcast Eternals taking on the Flesh Eater Courts. And if you're a Flesh Eater Courts fan, I think you're really going to love the models that have come out here. They look fantastic. Really nice to get some unique models in there that you can also use in Age of Sigmar. Same for Stormcast Eternals. They can all play in Age of Sigmar. So I'll be adding those to the collection when they're released for sure. But let's have a look at all the photos up close. So here we can see Nightmare Quest is the name of this final box set. I really like the look of the box art. I think it looks stunning. They always do a good job with the Warcry branding and even when they changed it to the Narwood style, it really looks good and I like the look of this one a lot. As far as contents go, I think I spoiled it a little bit with the leak video, but with the, the video pictures in there weren't perfect. So we can have a closer look at everything that's included now and it's confirmed as well. So here we go, here's Nightmare Quest. This is everything you're gonna receive in this new box set. I should say that although this is the box set to end the season, it's not gonna be long until we get another box set. So check out the roadmap that I'll go through at the end of this video, because there's a load more Warcry to come this year. We haven't gotta wait until October, November time like, norm like we normally do. So that's really cool. It looks like it's gonna be a great year for Warcry. But let's get back to the box set. You can see you've got the book there, Might and Madness. You've got the cards for each warband, the fighter cards and the ability cards. There's also going to be terrain cards, which we'll see later on another picture. So this actually doesn't give you every single thing that's included. Uh, but you can see the terrain though. They're all the terrain pieces. And if you put these together with the previous sets, you'll have enough for a full Age of Sigmar table as well. That's the idea with that. It's quite repetitive, I find, with this season. And it wasn't enough to tempt me in to continue and to keep getting each box. But I do like the centerpiece terrain in this. It does look really good. Although I like it, I think they could have gone a bit harder with this theme because with the Starcraft that crashed into the Narwood, I think we could have seen a bit more of the wreckage dotted around. I think that would have been interesting. Maybe something to do as a nice project, a terrain build, and uh, perhaps something I might do for my tournament that's coming up, my Age of Sigma tournament on the 2nd of July in Cornwall, UK. There's a link down below if you want to find out more about that. Let's have a look at the warbands now. So here we go. We've got the Questor Soul Sworn, Errant Questors and Questor Prime. These are the Stormcast Eternals, five models all together. You're going to get lots of different weapon options as well, but they all, most of them at least, have double-handed weapons, which I think look fantastic. Since I started playing Age of Sigmar properly, I've been really enjoying playing with the Stormcast Eternals, Krondis especially, but I just love the models. I think they're so fun. They look so cool. And this sleeker armor, the Thunderstrike armor, I really like. So these are going to fit in well with that. And I think having some characters to use amongst the models just to break it up a little bit, that's going to be really good. So as well as Warcry, these are going to be great for Age of Sigmar. And they'll also have their own rules anyway, so we could even include them as a separate unit, which is probably what I'm going to do, but I'll be trying out all different ways. I really like these. I can't wait to get them. I think I won't get the box set for Warcry, but I will get these when they come out individually, and I'll be doing some kind of campaign in Warcry with them alongside my Auric War Clans, and then also playing them in Age of Sigmar. But they look fantastic. Here's a close-up of one of the models, the Questor Soulsworn, Soulsworn Knight Relictor. I think it looks awesome with the white skull. That's really cool. And I've painted all my um, Stormcast Eternals in black, so having that white skull is really going to stand out. But as you can see from the previous picture, there's going to be some different options here for the heads too, as well as the weapons, so that's really fun. Let's see who they're going up against. Here are the Royal Beast Flayers, Ghoulgore Squires. So there's three of the models. You're getting quite a lot of these. There's going to be quite a lot in this warband. But these look fun. I love the skull mask. That guy at the back's up to something there with that huge uh, like monster of some kind skull on him. Looks great. These are my favourites though. The Offal Hounds. Great name. And in the video I did when we got the leaked pictures, we could see these just vaguely, very blurry. And I, I thought they looked like baboons, and now they really do. So this is awesome. It's like a baboon dog hybrid, or maybe a baboon panther of some kind. But yeah, really cool. Really interesting models. I love what they've done with these. 
And there's more because now we've got three ghoul trackers in there as well. All these are going to be combined together to make a pretty interesting looking warband. I don't know if I would want to play them. I'd want to fight against them for sure. I think they'd be fun to play against, but they're not really my kind of uh, theme that I would want to play and build and paint for myself. But the characters in it are really great. Check out this Beast Flayer Baron. Real sinister looking character. I love the, how the hands are so out of proportion. It just looks really cool. He's got some skin and skulls draped on him as well. Really great character. But here's the star of the show for the Royal Beast Flayers. This is the Royal Flame Master. Really interesting character. He's got some bone hands and wrists as knee guards, which are just insane. All sorts of spikes going on on the cloak there. You've got options apparently in the kit, so you can give him a different head, maybe with a skull or some flayed skin there as a mask. The weapon is just a spear through his arm, which is just mad but brilliant, and then you've also got weapon options too. If you don't fancy that, you can go with something else. I think this character is fantastic, and yeah, I really want to play against them, but not enough to tempt me into getting the box and painting them for myself. That's the terrain and models. Then we've got a bit to look at as far as the book and the cards are concerned. And then of course, we've got to look at the timeline, the roadmap for Warcry for the next year. Let me know what you think about the terrain and the models in the comments down below though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. For me, I think they should have gone a bit heavier with the crashed Starcraft. I think there was a lot of potential there and uh, yeah, they really wish they did do more than that, but still looks cool and it's gonna finish the set of terrain off nicely. Let's have a look at the book next. This is the Warband Tome, Might and Madness. This is gonna give us a look at all the contents and you're gonna get some campaigns in here. That was one thing they really pointed out during the online preview. You're gonna get the campaign arc, Storm of Madness, which sounds pretty interesting. You're gonna be fighting against all the different warbands now from the season, which is fun. And then of course you've got the rules for these two brand new ones in there, the Stormcast Eternals and the Royal Beast Flayers. Also, there's some additional Gnarlwood terrain rules in there as well. Check out this picture, looks so funny. Definitely the baboon theme is heavy here. And yeah, really cool idea. I'm looking forward to reading the lore actually on this. It should be pretty fun. But they highlighted that the artwork's all brand new as we'd expect in this new book. But let's have a look at the cards now. There's additional card decks included in this set, not just for the ability cards and the fighter cards, but also twist, victory and terrain cards too. Looking at the fighter types for the Questor Soul Sworn, there looks like there's seven fighter types to choose from. So a bit of variety with the weapons you give the models there, but only five models altogether to build. Some nice ideas maybe for kit bashing other models with bits you've got or different kits, putting them together. And then for the raw beast flayers, it looks like what we've seen are pretty much the fighter types we're gonna get. So no variety there. Although they did say there's some options with the weapons. And you can see actually in the top left hand, the flame master's got an ax rather than a spear. So there's one difference we can see right away. It's always nice to get those terrain cards, victory and twist cards as well. I'm really glad they do that. But I just feel the terrain from one set of any of the box sets from this season of Warcry just isn't enough. Warcry just cries out for loads of terrain, different levels, using that height and everything. I just don't think there's enough in one box set. I could be wrong, this might be enough, but looking just at this image as well, and from the photos we've seen, it's just not enough for me. Let me know what you think though. Do you think there's enough terrain or do you prefer a couple of boxes? I've mentioned it already, but they did put this slide up in the online preview saying that all the models will get rules of Age of Sigma. So that's really fun. But now let's have a look at this, the roadmap for 2023 to 2024 for Warcry. We're going to see Nightmare Quest, that box set that we've just been looking at coming out very soon, the next four weeks. And then look at this. In summer, there's a brand new starter set coming out designed for new players. Now, I'm pretty sure I've covered that in that sneak peek reveal video that I did. Uh, if you want to watch that, if you don't want to wait and you want to see what it could be, I'll link to it at the end of this video, but it will be a spoiler. So if you're looking for a surprise, wait for summer, don't watch that. But if you want to find out, if you can't resist, then check that video out. That'll be linked at the end of this one. I'm pretty sure I know what that summer release is going to be. It's really interesting though that they're changing the roadmap because normally you would come, you would get a new set of Warcry around Halloween time, October, November time they come out with that and then release the other sets afterwards. That's what they've done previously, but now we're getting this starter set in summer, which will be a, a smaller version of the box sets we're used to. And then in autumn, there's gonna be four new warbands, Order versus Destruction. I'm really looking forward to this. I hope we get some 
iron jaws especially, fingers crossed, maybe some bone splitters, but either way, I think this is really exciting. They said they're going to start moving away from chaos a bit now and filling in the gaps with all the other grand alliances. I think this is a really good way to do things because I, I don't know about you, I love getting all the new sets, but all these big box sets were just felt a little bit too much and they came around so often trying to buy them all with all the other games we play is a little bit too much, but now they're just going to bring out the war bands and if we can get those separately, that's fantastic because you're not going to like everything, so now we can pick and choose what we want and it's not long to wait. It's only autumn and then there's going to be four new war bands. But then in winter, there's two more. This time, it's going to be order and death. And then in spring, it's going to be, who knows, to be confirmed, maybe it's order and chaos or maybe they go destruction versus death. We'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, we've got lots. We've got eight new war bands to come. The ones in the starter set, I don't think they're going to be new if that leaked video I did is anything to go by. But still, eight new war bands is brilliant. And I wonder... If that's it for the box sets then, until next year after spring. So we might not see another box set for quite some time. This raises lots of questions. One especially, is this going to be a similar roadmap that they're going to implement for Kill Team? Because the two have been following each other quite closely. So lots to think about. And I guess we'll find out more about Kill Team later on in the online preview this weekend. I'll be covering it here for sure as soon as it drops. There you go, that's the new Warcry box set, Nightmare Quest. I, I love the models they've included in this, especially the Stormcast Eternals, but I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments section down below. Lots to look forward to for Warcry. I think the biggest reveal of this whole thing was the roadmap. I can't wait to see how they're going to be doing this now over the next year and looking forward to getting those warbands individually. It'd be nice to have a little bit of chill as far as box sets go. And can we see some monsters? That'd be nice. And maybe a few more monsters chucked in for Warcry. I don't know about you, but I'd really like to see that. But anyway, enough from me now. That's it. That's the Warcry update and preview covered from Warhammer Fest online preview today. I don't know about you, but I love seeing these previews. It's a really fun part of the hobby to see what's coming and we can get prepared for the year ahead now. Really awesome. But thanks so much for watching. Check out the other videos from the online preview if you'd like to watch them. They'll be linked at the end of this one. And uh, if you want to subscribe as well, that'd be cool. If you like the videos you've been watching lately, um, consider subscribing. That'd be awesome. But for now, thanks again. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Before you go, here's a short video telling you more about my Age of Sigma tournament that I'm running in Cornwall, UK on Sunday, the 2nd of July, 2023. If you can make it and you'd like to attend, there's a link in the description down below. It'd be brilliant to see you there. Are you a Warhammer fan in the southwest of England? The TTSG Age of Sigma tournament is coming to Cornwall and we want you to be a part of it. This is your chance to show off your strategy, skill and passion for the game. You'll receive a gift bag, fantastic prizes and trophies, tasty food available all day and a tournament pack with all the information you need. Join us and compete against players from all over the region, meet new friends, share tactics and witness epic battles as you compete for the championship title. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of an awesome community and battle for ultimate glory. Register now and we can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.